Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. Um, there's been more in the news lately about this growing uh, problem with uh, cancer occurring in younger and younger adults. You may have heard they've lowered the screening for colonoscopies, they're lowering the screening age for uh, breast cancer, you know, mammography, and um, the problem is that with the news and just the medical community in general, when they discuss this, they're afraid to kind of offer a supposition about what's going on. And so this morning there was somebody on the news and then they've got this doctor in his white lab coat to be some authority, even though this was an arthritis doctor, which was kind of strange to me. But anyhow, and they're talking about it's multifactorial and we've got, you know, smoking, obesity, uh, diabetes, uh, air pollution, maybe the food, the gut biome. They're talking about all these things saying, oh, it's all these different things without realizing that all of those things have one thing in common and that they are all sources of inflammation. Now, if we have three different cancers, so there's mainly breast cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, uh, probably others, but those for sure are occurring sooner uh, in, in life in these younger adults. These are all happening at the same time, all right? It's very unlikely that we've got three different things that are causing each of these to occur sooner in life, right? It just doesn't work that way. It's just too the odds are too extreme that that would be the case. It's far more likely it's one thing that's occurring more or more intensely or beginning sooner that can account for all of these cancers starting sooner. Now, here's a little background of what we think at a modern level about cancer. We think the way cancers occur are either they're triggered you get a mutation right away, and that probably applies for lung cancer. Or two, it's known that all of us have cancer in our bodies. Probably since birth, we have little nodes of cancerous cells. They aren't aggressive, but they're cancer. Our immune system is taking care of them. They don't grow. And for the most part, they'll never bother us our entire life. As an example, we know that women between the ages of 40 and 50, 40% have cancer in their breasts. All right, how do we know this? Well, they do what's called an all-cause mortality. So if you take women between 40 and 50, they've passed away from whatever reason, a car wreck, they were murdered, they had pneumonia, they had cancer, whatever the cause, heart attack, and you do an autopsy and you go through and look at their breast tissue, 40% of them have cancer which is kind of interesting because then you have to say, hmm, only 14% of women will, will develop breast cancer in a way that it's detectable. So what happens to the other 26%? They live a normal life with no cancer problems, no cancer problems, okay? But they have cancer in their breasts, we know that, 40% do, all right? Same thing with prostate cancer, all sorts of cancers, thyroid cancer, all sorts of stuff. We're walking around with cancer. It's just they, these clusters of cancers generally are just DNA typos that occur that, uh, so cells start growing kind of abnormally. Your immune system is designed to recognize these and just control these and they don't ever become a problem, all right? Now, so that's kind of the background for most cancers. And uh, then what happens is uh, inflammation comes along. Now, inflammation, one of the things it does, and so inflammation can be from this laundry list of things they said, smoking, diabetes, obesity, gut biome, food, food is vegetable oil, right? Air, that's the, the microparticles, the, the uh, 2.5 micron particles in the air. And so they talk about these things with inflammation. You develop, develop inflammation in the body. Inflammation suppresses your immune system, the immune system that's controlling these cancers. So now they can't really control them quite as well. 
inflammation is known to make cancer growth more aggressive. So now the tumor is going to grow more. And uh, incidentally, inflammation makes your chemotherapy not work as well. Okay. So you, all of these things that they want to just say are different and like each cancer is going to have some different thing. They aren't. They're one thing. Okay, inflammation. Inflammation is starting sooner and it's more intense and it's triggering cancer. But also, inflammation is also triggering diabetes at a younger age, heart disease at a younger age, autoimmune disorders at a younger age, neurological problems at a younger age. It's inflammation. Don't, don't just sit on your hands. You gotta focus on this. Now, what are the main sources? For most people, it's the vegetable oils and the food. You need olive oil to block that. It's the lack of omega-3s. Omega-3s are the molecules your body uses to turn off inflammation. You need to supplement with a good fish oil. Major source, bacterial overgrowth, placebo, S-I-B-O. All right, huge source of inflammation. A quarter to a third of patients don't have any symptoms. Okay, you gotta, you gotta get some help looking at that. Those things can cause your vagus nerve to not work correctly. That's the this system, the vagus nerve, uh, that helps detect and regulate inflammation. And then we've got obesity, we've got smoking, we've got these other things. you got to start looking at inflammation if you want to stay healthy. All right? So this early cause of cancer is not a mystery. It's from inflammation. All right? Just make that clear. There's no doubt about that. It's just that researchers are so afraid to have, offer some supposition without some big study, okay? By sitting on their hands and not, not offering this kind of info, it's just going to cause needless people to die. All right, everybody take care. Have a good day. Bye.